Hey everybody, it's been a minute since I made a video, but there's been some good reasons for that. You know, outside of regular life and everything being busy, I've had this cool project going on and I want to show you all about it. Anyway, stick with me. Let's check it out. My name is Doug. This is Astro AF. It's been weeks and weeks of just trying to get where I'm at right now. A lot of it just because I'm working on the weekends and then we the last couple weeks, we've been rained out trying to do work, uh, lots of storms. We've got lots of clouds. The weather's just not been very cooperative, but I'm trying to make some progress. Anyway, I thought I'd show you around and know that I'm recording this like kind of out of context um, and uh, I'll try and make this sort of fit, <laughs> you know, it's hard to put this video together over a couple months time. So as you can see, my walking around the telescope has trodden down the grass and killed it. And while these three concrete blocks did a great job for stabilizing my tripod, I want it to do better. So the yard's about eight inches out of level and 10 feet. So I had to do some digging and get this base level and then went ahead and started digging for the concrete pier as well. That hole is 16 inches wide by 40 inches deep. Our frost line is about 36 inches here. So for code, we got to be below that. I did a test fit on the pier, as you can see, and then I also dug a trench over to that to allow for the electrical and the conduit to go in and then getting the height set on the top of the pier here and the conduit run through it. I got the conduit run approximately on center of the sauna tube and turned up so it can come up through the top of the concrete pour. So we had a whole lot of gravel go in this and I used this trailer to haul it around back and then these two boards that I have laying in the uh, in the paver area are to measure the thickness of the gravel. I was doing one and a half inch thick layers and tamping them in between each. And so I'd go ahead and pour out the gravel and screed it to get it leveled and then move on to uh, doing the next layer. So yeah, you can see I've had some wash in of dirt here. I'll get get that cleaned up. It's no big deal. It's just right on the surface there. But this is a pad. We've got uh, it was really out of level, and um, over on uh, this side over here by where the rake is, that's about maybe eight inches deep now, and we're maybe about six inches deep on this side, somewhere in that neighborhood, which is a lot more gravel than what I had planned on. That's actually, this is enough gravel to um, use for a driveway, uh, honestly, at eight inches. Uh, you'd be able to drive a car on it, but that's fine. It'll, it'll just be what it is. Uh, on top of this is going to be uh, pavers that I'll be setting in with like polymeric sand to uh, lock them all in. But we'll get to that in a later stage of this project. Uh, down here, I've got the sauna tube, and it goes down in there about 40 inches, which is below our frost line. And got a rebar cage here, all wired together. I've got uh, conduits that are coming up. These are for my power and my ethernet to go to the scope. And uh, running these uh, separately in separate conduits per code, so we don't have... Uh, a higher voltage line in with the low voltage and risk bleed over. That should also help isolate the uh, the network from electrical noise and uh, give better uh, connection and stuff. I've got this padding in here. This is actually like a sil seal foam. And that's to allow the concrete when it dries and cures, it's going to kind of expand a little bit and and it'll give that some padding so it doesn't bond directly to the conduit and that uh, they'll help protect the conduit from getting cracked. So I've got a rubberized paint around the outside of the sauna tube because I'm going to leave it in there. It's actually going to function as expansion joint and isolation of the pier from the pad. There'll be some more isolation around this, but uh, it's a little bit out of round right now, but I've got a plan to get that into round I'm guessing that people are going to comment and ask, you know, why I don't have this warmed up. You know, I'll tell you that that sauna tube back here 
it goes 40 inches down into the ground. It's setting on gravel. So we got the height and then we actually laid gravel down in there, lifted the sonar tube up and got it set on compacted gravel. And then it was about one inch oversized, the hole that we dug and uh, so fit the sonar tube down there, got it all leveled up. And then I filled the whole perimeter about a half inch on each side with sand to take up that gap. This thing is so locked in right now, it is not moving. It doesn't need to be formed up in any way. All I need to do is wrap a couple of straps around the top to make sure that it stays round and doesn't bulge out. And that's all this thing is gonna need. It's gonna work great. So today, I'm gonna haul a bunch of bags of concrete back here and I'm gonna start mixing. I got a drill and a mix paddle and I'm gonna start pouring concrete into that sauna tube until I get it filled up and get the top finished. Probably, I think our weather's supposed to be good, no rain, but I'll probably put some kind of cover over that just to be safe. And then we're gonna be waiting at least two weeks for this thing to cure. So, it will, you know, it just takes what it takes. But once that's done, I'm gonna be putting a, uh, I'll be drilling in some lags in epoxy and uh, mounting a pier on top of that. So really excited about that. That's gonna really level things up, make my workflow better have the scope be much more stable for its alignment and I shouldn't have to, you know, I'm hoping that I, that alignment is few and far between, you know, in terms of maybe like every month or so. I don't know what the expectation is on that. We'll see. Um, but I'm hoping that this is really going to uh, isolate it from any ground movement and things like that. And uh, at the depth of this pier, it uh, is totally overkill. That's a 16 inch pier, 40 inches deep with rebar completely isolated from the ground around it. And it'll be completely isolated from the uh, pavers when I put them in. So yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty cool. And it'll be really nice to have the underground uh, power and uh, ethernet coming up here. We'll terminate those up at the top of the uh, of the pier. Ha building a custom pier, me and a buddy over in Ohio. He's an auto body guy, restoration uh, with shop, machine shop and everything. And he, uh, uh, we, we designed this pier and we're, uh, he's building it and welding it for me over there and getting it painted because he's an auto body guy. It should be nice looking when it's here. And then once I get it, then um, I'll be uh, marking it out and drilling and uh, mounting that thing on top of this concrete. So, so anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a time-lapse and we'll go ahead and do this thing today. So I've got the concrete hauled back and I got the straps around the top of the sauna tube as I had mentioned. That's just to help hold that in round as I'm going. And then just basically everything laid out. I've got a couple concrete blocks here that are going to help protect that sauna tube as I'm pouring in the concrete. All right, so concrete pour day. This is one of those things where once you start, you can't stop. And so you have to dedicate and make sure you've got all the time that you need in order to get it done, have everything ready. I actually did have a few problems on this. My uh, my drill that I was using to mix the concrete burn up. And so I went and picked up a, a new drill. It was heavier duty, more torque, and it did a great job. So I was just breaking up bags of concrete here, mixing them about half a bag at a time and pouring them in. And then every every couple bags or so, I would uh, go ahead and put the, the mix paddle down inside the sauna tube to make sure that the layers of concrete that I'd been pouring in had are also mixed up. So that went really good. I was getting bucket challenged here. I had uh, been wearing holes in the sides and bottom of the bucket. So I've got them stacked together here. I ended up both buckets had problems, but when I stacked them together, I was able to get one good bucket out of them. And then I just went ahead and finished up the concrete. So I wanted to do something cool on this pier. And so I added in some crystals. I have quartz and obsidian and some rose quartz here, making up a compass rose. And then just letting that set and everything and uh, and start curing, I had to clean all this mess up. So uh, after that, it was just waiting. And so now we're a couple weeks later and I went ahead and I did a, uh, a strong vinegar wash on this to clean it up and then uh, put a sealer on it. So after tamping, everything was done with the gravel base and I was ready to move on.
So I started in on the sanding after I got all the paver blocks hauled back around here. And then I needed to add at least one and a half inches of sand, approximately anywhere between one and one and a half inches. And I, the process was the same. I was using some one inch tubing here to screed and get level with. And then once I got all that done, I was ready. I had my sand base and this was ready to go ahead and start laying out the pavers. So as you can see, the dogs were trying to help me here, but uh, what I ended up doing is uh, using a flat trowel and just troweling out the sand as I went around. And so I just did this for each layer, starting from the inside, I got it spaced out with some expansion that I ended up uh, replacing for a different material later. I actually ended up using uh, more of a, a foam material than the rubberized material. It uh, it worked out better for compression on the uh, on the pavers to keep it separated from the pier. So anyway, once I this was so hot today, it was like 92 degrees while I was doing this. So I had to take frequent breaks because it was like ridiculous uh, but it was going good and so anyway I just kept going on I, I ended up with a couple days in this I, I did uh, I think four or five courses on this day and then I had another three or four to do that I did the next morning and I started really early like like six o'clock in the morning trying to beat the sun but uh, overall it went really well and I was happy with uh, with how these blocks all laid out there was a pattern to these blocks, and so I would lay out the pattern around the outside there first and then come back in and fit them all. And again, using the trowel to level out the sand as I went. And I just kept moving course by course and getting this filled in. And finally, I was able to finish up, and I thought it looked really good on its first cleanup. And here I've got that foam expansion joint in. I'm leaving it high so that I can prevent sand from coming into that area. And then I also got the edging placed around the outside edge to hold everything together. All right, so all of that work has led up to this, and I just wanted to show you where I'm at now. I've got a couple things left to do. Uh, today, it uh, has been rainy, although it's sunny right now. I'm waiting for things to dry out. But uh, yeah, let me, let me show you where we're at exactly. So this is the new pier pad. And obviously I don't have the pier in yet. That's gonna be coming in an upcoming video. But what I do have is the pad itself. And as you saw, we have the pier in the middle. I have the expansion joint in here high right now cause I'm going to be putting in, it's called polymeric sand. And that fills all the joints of the pad. And then I uh, add a little bit of water to that once I, once I get all the sand in there and that'll harden into a, a cement, like a hard grout uh, for all of these, uh, these paver joints. But that expansion joint that's in the middle, I'm leaving it high right now to help keep the polymeric sand from uh, getting over into the top of the pier. And I, I know I showed you this earlier, but the pier itself has got uh, some cool crystals in here, the uh, obsidian, I've got a quartz here and, uh, uh, and then some rose quartz. And what these are, are my compass rose indicators. And uh, that quartz one up here at the top, that's pointing due north. And this obsidian down here is pointing to the south. And the other ones are other coordinates. But yeah, to the landscaper around here, kind of what the plan is is to put some plantings in around the border here, which we're going to get to soon. I've got an, uh, I'll, I'll throw up a picture of it. It's an ameliorary, kind of a sundial. It's a cool equatorial sundial. It's going to go on top of this pedestal. And then on either side, over here and over there, I'm going to have uh, maybe like a three or four foot uh, stone bench. So this can be like a seating area, a place to set my computer down while I'm working on the scope. And then obviously we've got the, the pier. So I've got my conduits in here for uh, power and network that are going to come up through underground and, uh, you know, and provide that power to the telescope and network to the telescope. And I won't have any more extension cords and stuff like that running around the yard. And... Yeah, so uh, I think it's coming along. I got the, 
uh, ground repair done because we've done a lot of work around here and I've had a lot of digging and we kind of tore the yard up. But uh, uh, trying to get it back together, I got grass seed in yesterday and we'll give this a few weeks and hopefully it'll be coming in. Uh, this time of year is pretty good for planting grass. So I'm really excited about this project and uh, I'll have a couple more installments as I make more progress and get to the point where we're finishing up, especially when I get to the uh, installation of the pier. And we move over into the shade a little bit here maybe. And so the pier, a buddy of mine over in Ohio is fabricating the pier for me. He's a, uh, a classic car auto body guy and has a, a great shop and, uh, and uh, paint equipment and, and skills like nobody's business. And, um, and he and I have been fabricating this pier for a while now. And it's just a part, you know, in our, in our free time and it's getting close to being done. I should have it here. When I, when I do get it, I'll be, I'll do a video, but I'm gonna be bolting it down to that concrete pier that's, uh, that's installed there in, the, in, the, in that pad area and get out of the sun a little bit. So, and then also then the telescope set up on the pier and some things there. So there's at least two more videos that I'm gonna be installed in. So make sure and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you will get uh, notified when those videos come out. And anyway, I hope you like this video and this project. I think it's really cool. I'm excited about it. I won't be killing the grass walking around to the telescope anymore. In the bad weather, uh, it, you know, I'll have a, a cleaner place to walk. And I think next spring, I'll probably do, start a walkway path project to get out to it without having to walk through the grass. And uh, uh, that'll make it easier. So, uh, and also I'm excited about having the telescope on, a, uh, uh, you know, on the pier mounted to the earth basically and not have to worry about heavy winds and storms and things like that where before I had everything anchored down with guy wires and stakes and everything to make sure if we did get heavy winds, it wasn't gonna get blown over or anything. And I won't have to worry about that anymore with the, um, you know, with the pier. And as you know, uh, my scope, my, my rig set up uh, basically 24 seven, 365, you know, unless I'm traveling. So, uh, and, and it works out well. And the, the main thing is to make sure that it's secured and, and is storm proof. So, and that's what I'm working on. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you. And uh, thank you all for your support. And if you, if you do like this channel and, and this content would like to become a member, you can join. Link's in the description. And uh, I have a, a Discord you can join over there. And for members, we have a members only area. Uh, also have some merch. Uh, I have links in my merch store that are also down below. Any little things that help support the channel that uh, are very much appreciated and help me keep creating content. All right, so thanks so much. I'm Doug. You guys have a great day.